I've always wanted to see this down in person. But First stage is done. Alright you guys, this is now the day after I made that post on Facebook saying it, it begins. Um, the guy that's headed this way, his name's going to be Ryan as well. So in case you get confused by anything, uh, he had a tooth pulled yesterday and it was a big deal. It ended up busting one of his other teeth or something, so he was down all day. That's fine. We still have today and tomorrow off together. Uh, I'm trying to not blabber too much this video and get straight to the point. We're obviously going to start on the front first. I'm probably going to make two videos of this, one for the front one for the rear. Um, I don't know. This is my first time doing anything like this, so he knows what he's doing, I'm pretty sure. Um, Hopefully, we can get at least one side done today and then the other side done tomorrow. All right, we're at a standstill now because our the nut in here is not the same size as the socket. I got the socket sizes from uh, on the rocks yesterday. Maybe they reversed it. Maybe I, this is the rear one. And the one I'm waiting on at Napa might be this one. Uh, I don't know. All you had was you had these... Slipped over right here. Just like that. And before you can take this off, you have a, a what do you call that, dust cap, a hub cover, bearing cover, yeah. bearing cap. And there's a snap ring right here. So you can't just take this whole thing off. You gotta take the little cap off, then the snap ring, and then you have to do a little bit of prying you can get this off. So that's where we're at now, trying to get this uh, nut off. Okay, so update. Um, that socket did take this outer nut off. It, it was a little bit loose, but now that I got it out, when we go back to Napa, I'm gonna find one that's a little bit tighter of a fit. Uh, so that's where we're at now. That's what it looks like. And we're gonna go ahead and pop this uh, brake caliper and everything off, hang it off. All right, so about what three hours later probably we found a socket we think is gonna work it's got to be deep like this it's a 2 and 1 16th size socket um, you might as well if you're gonna buy this kit and do anything like this go ahead and order one of these on Amazon unless you just have like a thousand tool stores around you because nowhere had this we had we tried Harbor Freight, Northern Tool, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Napa, uh, pretty much anything in the area. And we had to drive uh, basically about an hour and a half from the house to meet a guy that I really don't even know how that worked. They had another shop based in Lake Charles and then another one in Lafayette. And we got the one out of Lafayette. Uh, anyway, this fits Where's that nut at? Is it in there? There it is. Yeah. So, the two and eighth will work. It's just loose. And the problem is on the inner nut of the, uh, the axle, you can't reach because this isn't deep enough. So, that's your main issue. Which he did tell me that. Uh, Wyatt did tell me that. And in the instructions for this, this axle kit, uh, they do say that. But, you can see how this fits, it's perfect. So, that's where we're at now. We're headed back to the house. We're gonna see if this, uh, this is long enough to do what we need to do. All right, let me tell y'all a little bit of something about these sockets. This whole excursion with the front has been a nightmare. This was too thick of a wall to fit down in there, which he's already taken it off. So I had to take the grinder to it now. So this is where I'm at. This sock will be sale for like $300 after I'm done with this project. So, you know, comment below if you want a $300 socket. Anyway, we can get to the next part. Got 
case you didn't notice, we did take off the steering components. They're laying over there. We got all the castle nuts laying up in there. Should be pretty obvious. Now he's taking the bearing caps off. And there she comes. I think. Have our bearing cap sitting right here, organized. Left stays left, right stays right. All right, need some help. All right, I'm underneath it now. Uh, I got the drive shaft off up here in the front and we're trying to take this nut off. My air compressor isn't strong enough. I don't have enough juice to get that off there. So he's got his Harbor Freight he's about to hook up, which is plenty of power. And while I was under here, I wanted to go ahead and see how much slop this had in it in case the transfer case drop was absolutely necessary. This isn't moving out too easily or too far, so I think we're still good on that. All right, so where we're at so far, just beat the pinion out. What we ended up having to do, it was so tight, it, in there put that uh extension onto a smaller socket a sacrificial socket i held the channel locks right here that way it couldn't slip and go any further and he hit on it with a hammer pushed it through there so uh i'm gonna pull the pinion out and then we're ready to slide the new one in i suppose there she is. Well, there she was. Honey, what are you cooking? Bearings, sweetie. Mm-mm. Let's <laughs> go in there. Okay, so the oven idea was going yesterday. Uh, then we ran into the speed bump with the... Uh, Bearings not coming off us not having a bearing puller. He ran to O'Reilly's and rented one so uh, We're not going back with the oven because The the wife kind of pitched a fit and I don't blame her smell like somebody was welding in there, but uh Anyway barbecue pit it is All right, so this is where we're at right now um I have my wrenches set up. I don't know if we're going to go this route, but I have nothing else thin enough. We don't have the piece that comes off here. I don't know exactly what that's supposed to look like, but he says it doesn't come with it in the box that we got uh, when he rented it from O'Reilly's. So I needed something thin and strong to, to go in between here. This is our homemade little deal so we could beat the bearings out and that uh, carrier can drop. We already got the other side bearing off, and he is on my Facebook right now asking some of you guys. Um, some questions about shimming. Uh, apparently the stock pinion, your your shims are up behind your race on this particular axle. So, um, what is it called? Eight thousandths of an inch? Uh, yeah, right? it's going to have to add about eight thousandths of an inch on the uh, pinion depth. Yeah. Uh, what we're trying to find out right now that's most concerning is most of the ones that I've seen the shims go on the outside of the carrier bearing right here in between the axle tube and the bearing race itself on these though it's underneath against the carrier itself in between the carrier and the, and the bearing itself so we're trying to figure out 
if it matters, if the new one recalls one way or the other. All right, well, that's y'all's update for right now. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens and update you with the next step. I'm trying to update you guys as much as I can, but without, you know, keeping myself from being able to help him and learn myself. We just took the carrier out of the freezer and the bearings are on the barbecue pit over there. Um, we have the, the bottom side bearing on. So now it's just a matter of guessing game and trying to do some math uh, to figure out the uh, shims needed to go in there. I just got off the phone with with uh, Wyatt at On The Rocks and he confirmed to me that the shims have to go on the inside of the bearing. They can't go on the outside. Like, I, I don't know, is it mostly, most vehicles? Most of them that I've seen. Like, most vehicles that, that he's seen, uh, you can put them on the outside. So. And, and the ones I've seen on YouTube from looking at is, I can confirm that. So, I don't know, maybe maybe you guys had different experiences, but that's where we're at, so. All right, so, rain gear is going on the carrier. Okay, another update. It's several hours later. Uh, we're to the point where we're using the dial indicator that he's got right there. Um, so it feels pretty good. There's all kinds of better videos on YouTube to explain how you would set this. But basically, once you get the right width to where it slides in there like you want to, then you got to move it left and right so that it's on the pinion gear in the back perfectly. So. You know, just say that, just use easy number 10. Say it takes 10 whatever metric to, to get that to fit perfectly in there. Well, it might be too far to the left. That means you might need to take one from, from this side, and now it's a six and four to equal that 10 instead of five and five, if that makes any sense. So uh, anyway, he's putting that on here and he's about to take some measurements. Okay, we think we are Ready to button it up or not? Nah? I don't know. Good? Like, yeah. we agree? Like it's fully now, just tighten everything up? Okay. Yeah, I think good. So, I'm gonna show y'all. I'm trying to halfway show people that haven't done this, um, that maybe could use this for reference. And this isn't just for the rocks or anything with a differential. Somebody like me that could use a little bit of something to tell them you see uh, I don't have any light but you might be able to tell where the paint is missing you had you had Bob Ross over here with his little paintbrush painting on it and I was on the back end over there spinning it and uh, he's looking at where the gears were hitting and that determines your opinion depth opinion yes. okay yeah so you could see it's about yeah, I mean, and he, he looked up the optimal area for it to <clears throat> to be touching on there, and we're in the optimal area. It's, not, it's probably a quarter inch from the end of the, the gear tee, so I think we're just going to start tightening everything down and put the cover on, I believe. Right? I'd like, the, to, I'd like to the, uh, clean it up real good. Yeah. We've been yeah. More dirty hands and stuff in there. Yeah, like clean it up. Real good and make sure. We'll pop the diff back out, blow it down, break clean, clean off the inside of that, and uh, I guess go ahead and take the pinion back out so we can get all that crap out of the, and now the back of it. Now clearance is set, you know, we've been handling with all our fingers and everything. I think we need to clean everything up real good and make sure that I'm not it. Okay, so the next time you see me will either probably be with it all the way on or I might show you real quick when we put those locking hubs on when we get to that point or if we have anything else in between there. Okay, so a little update again. I had to get with uh, On The Rocks, talk to Wyatt again. Uh, we was wondering if we were supposed to try to reuse this crush sleeve again or not. And uh, so I asked him, and if you don't know what this is, it's first time for me as well. 
you put this on and you beat it down, torque it down or whatever, and it and it shrinks like this, and what holds tension basically? Yeah, it holds yeah. Tension. yeah, it's supposed to hold tension and keep everything tight in there or whatever. Okay, so we couldn't find in the gear kit we got, so apparently he sent me side by side pictures and. I would take mine out of the freezer and show you, but I think I can explain it decently like this. The new ones, the one that go in in there, they pretty much are like deleted. It's like already accounted for within your pinion. So you no longer need a crush sleeve for some of the gear sets you might get. Just check, check and see what you get. But if you're scrambling around looking for them, it's probably because you don't have them and they're built into your pinion. All right, so we're down to torquing. Uh, 60 foot-pounds is what we found online. And he's doing a round of 30 real quick uh, first. That's going to be hard to get to. I might have to do it. All right. Then we're going to go back second round for 60. All right, guys. So this is several days later. I know this video is taking forever to get uploaded. I had a super major issue with the U-joint. Nothing to do with the manufacturer or anything. It was our screw up, we was rushing, we was wore out from all the other stuff we was doing. And um, anyway, this got hung up in this one, I believe. To sum it up, nothing would come out. The, the needle bearings ended up flying out. So this ended up getting cut. Uh, well, the U-joint got cut out with the torch. So fast forward to now, um, I just want to show you in case you don't know how to put U-joints in. Uh, beating it with a hammer is the least effective. Um, so I finally found a vice. I'm putting one cap in, getting it just snug with the hammer, like tapping it to where it'll catch itself. And then I'm putting it up in here without the other cap on yet and just kind of pushing this one in about halfway and then i'll put the other cap on because it should like self-align kind of in that way because if, if you try to slide this cap on um with it all cockeyed you're going to end up fighting needle bearings those little small beads running around in there you end up fighting that so now my plan is i got the u-joints kind of slid over in the middle i'm going to put this cap on i'm going to press this a little bit and then i'm going to run over there to that orange thing the press actual press uh, to use better for this and uh, that's how I've been finishing them off so moving along now hopefully I can get these two axles built before I go to bed tonight Okay, so real quick, I'm going to show you guys, uh, this is where I'm at on this side, on the uh, passenger side. Didn't really have any problem getting that back together. Uh, you can see the diffs in, the axle slid in. At this point, I don't know what I've told you guys already or not, so just disregard if I, if I repeat stuff. But uh, I felt like it was pretty important if I'm going to try to give a little a, a newbie guide to, to doing this um, to show how these are, are built in here. Okay, so I only have one hand. Uh, I'm going to try to show you what I can. There's all your pieces right here that's going to go down in here. This isn't your typical, like if uh, on your truck, your Dana 44, you don't have the same kind of uh, washer style stuff so uh, yeah I'm gonna get to it I just kind of repack this bearing a little bit throw some more grease down in there okay so the first thing I don't know if you can see it but my other race and bearings are already in there from when I took it off they stayed just like the other side now the first thing that goes in is that washer spacer or whatever you want to call it um, so it's gonna sit right there on the on the inside of the bearing pretty much okay 
Then you got this big like spacer thing. It goes down right on top of that. Okay, then you have another washer. This goes just like that. Then my race is already in there. Can you see it? Going around the side. And your race is just what your bearing sits in. Again, I know 90% of you guys know what that is already, but I'm trying to help out new people. Just maybe they're confused about some of the technical stuff. Okay, so bearing is now sitting in the race. stuff I try to move around a little bit try to keep a hand clean I'm trying to use my left hand as my dirty grease hand I guess okay see it went all the way on there don't worry too much if um if this stuff isn't pressed back like you want it just yet all the way in there because that's pretty much what all of this stuff is going to do and I'm going to try to show you guys as much as I can about this Let me see. okay so I don't know if the camera recorded it kind of it like cut off I don't know from inactivity or what but all I did was slide a washer on back there and it only can go one way it's got to go in a little groove on this right here so now time for your this is what they call an inner axle nut you don't tighten this up like crazy tight you get it snug but you don't bear down on this one because this one it's pressing on your bearing you know I mean there there might be people that disagree with me and maybe I'm wrong but that's just from what I heard and what I've seen the only other time I've done this was on a 83 uh, square body Chevrolet held together for as long as I had it so now right, I was just checking making sure it was going on there like it's supposed to right, it's getting tight all right I snugged it up with my hand and that's that's it do not put an impact on that or something and go nutty with it like I said, other people might disagree with me. I don't know. Okay. Then you got this thing. It's your locking washer. Okay, it's got a it's got a little groove right here as well. And what it does is whenever I get it in there, in case you can't see it, you're gonna slide it in there, then you're gonna bend one of these tabs over into this nut here. So I'm gonna put this on after this. And I'm going to tighten this nut up to where I'm going to tighten this up to where I can do this and then take a screwdriver and, and pry that down on it to keep this, this nut from spinning. I hope you guys can see that. I can't tell. Alright, here we go. I already know my groove. Uh, I'm going to bring you with me. I already know my groove is somewhere down there at the bottom there we go you see that that little that little tab slides it underneath the uh, the other washer okay now um, now it's time for the other nut 
kind of clean the inside of it off with my finger. Now go on with the nut. Alright, now I'm going to torque this one down. Now this one, I'm pretty sure you can go a lot harder on, on turning it. Because it's not directly compressing a bearing or something like that. So, hopefully with no oil in it yet, um, I'm about to do that. And it being quiet with nothing on in here, you can hear this. So, it is currently locked. Hold on. No, it's not. Let me see. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I'm spinning this wheel. My pinion spinning. It's hard to do with one hand. But you can see that now let me see if I can hold this camera out here so you can see look at the uh, axle the the knuckle uh, it's, see it ain't spinning all the time that's your open open differential okay now watch this hopefully you can hear it kick in Okay. Now, hopefully whenever I turn this you can hear it kick in. I'm going to put you on a tripod. Okay. Well, I didn't hear it but you can see that one spinning over there all the time. Now watch. Okay, you might have been able to hear that kick out. Much easier to spin. I'm going to get you guys closer to it. Maybe you can see up here that axle. And I'm going to try to move this a little bit more. Now, now listen for it. Alright, open diff. It is much harder to spin. Let me kick it out now. All right, I'll tell y'all what. This has been a pain and I'm not looking forward to doing the rear. Uh, nothing to do with the fitting by the way. The parts are are perfectly fitting. Uh, it's just my first rodeo. I'm by myself today, which is fine. Um, but I don't think you could pay me to do another one of these sets. It's a lot of work, but I mean, look at all this crap. I don't have no special tools that you're supposed to use to do it the right way. So, uh, you guys that have have more experience with this stuff and or have the correct tools I applaud you uh, and this should be a lot easier for you so I need to torque these down and add some gear oil and then that's going to be it for this video I'm going to do a whole separate video for the rear uh, I have work in like literally like an hour I haven't ate, uh, I have to work a 14 and a half hour shift tonight, haven't slept, so it's going to be fun, but I should be able to bolt these up and tighten them down. I don't know when this video will get uploaded. Alright, we'll catch y'all later.